Imagine your business running on autopilot when a client task is completed in ClickUp, an invoice is automatically generated. When you mark a video ready for edit in ClickUp, your Google Drive suddenly has all the episode folders ready for you to upload your raw footage. No copying information between systems, no manual updates, nothing slipping through the cracks. That is the power of ClickUp webhooks and today I'm sure showing you exactly how to make them work for you, including the new ClickUp Webhooks 2.0 update that's going to make your automation life even easier. Now, if we haven't met yet, I am Yvonne Hyman, aka Evie from AskEvie.com. I am a business efficiency consultant and leadership coach. And after setting up hundreds, if not thousands of webhook integrations for clients who were drowning in manual work, I've seen firsthand how implementing webhooks can easily save you three to five hours of tedious work every single week. And that's per process. And along the way, also cut your make.com bill in half. And I promise, even if you're not technical, you can do this too. So let's break down webhooks in the most simple way. A webhook is like a digital phone line between your apps. So when something happens in ClickUp, the webhook calls another tool and says, hey, something is happening. Think of it as ClickUp proactively reaching out rather than tools having to constantly check in if anything changed. This is the huge difference between ClickUp webhooks and a lot of other automations where it both saves you time and money. So why does it matter to use webhooks over regular automations in make.com or Zapier? Now, what happens is, for example, if I go into make.com and I say, hey, if something changes in Google Sheets, I want to have something to happen. That would mean my initial trigger in make.com is check Google Sheets and check Google Sheets and constantly calling Google Sheets to check if anything has changed. It's like your mom calling every five minutes asking if you've eaten yet. Not only is that annoying, but you are paying for every single one of those check-in calls, whether something changed or not. This is not unlimited calling. One of my clients was literally burning through their make.com operations because their automation checked Google Sheets every 15 minutes. That is 96 operations daily just to check. Webhooks eliminate this waste. The webhook proactively activates when something is actually happening. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. If you are already using webhooks, you might be worried about ClickUp's new webhook 2.0 update that I already mentioned. Are my existing workflows gonna break? Do you need to rebuild everything? Good news, your legacy webhooks will keep working exactly as they are. No panic or rush to update anything. ClickUp isn't removing the functionality, they are literally just adding to it and upgrading it. So what is new and better in 2.0? Number one, you are getting more functionality and customizability. Second, Webhooks are not longer tied to locations, meaning they are more broad usable without you having to run similar webhooks over and over and over, pretty much doing the same thing. Like our YouTube process automation is pretty much the same as the podcast automation. Just a couple little different data points. Now I can use the same webhook for that. Third, testing if your webhooks are actually working properly has become much easier. And last but not least, webhooks can trigger by chat messages. Did I mention I really love ClickUp Webhooks 2.0? All of this sounds quite nerdy. Let's start with the simple part and let's walk you through setting up a Webhook 2.0 in ClickUp is really simple. You pretty much go into your automations wherever you are and you create a new automation. What is the trigger? In our case, it is often a custom field. It's one of our stages, which in this case, we are in YouTube, which is probably, there we go, YouTube graphics. So for example, when the YouTube graphics are ready, I want to send out a webhook. And when you're building new ones, use pretty, 
pretty please use the new one don't use the legacy one and then create webhook call the webhook something like youtube video done you can add additional descriptions to it the url this is often the first question of oh my god how do i do this this is where your secondary tool comes in that secondary tool is giving you the information you need so in our case we love make.com create a new scenario in make.com and find the webhooks and use a custom webhook now you either can use specific webhooks you already have or you can add one and name it it all does the same thing it gives you this url right in here and you just copy the address and go back in your automation and paste it done that's literally how simple it is to create a webhook now you can go nerdier you don't have to you can go nerdier you have your custom fields in here where you can choose certain things and you can customize it and you can add your headers and url parameters you don't have to you don't have to this does is your webhook enabled or not yes because we want to have it running and there is your test your webhook failed because we haven't saved it yet once all of this is built so what then happens here is cool we have this and then we probably want to do something, get a task, do do something. This is where you then build your make.com automation and decide what you want to do with all of this. Now, what you can do with all of this, let me show you one of my favorite examples, our video production folder automation. So as I already mentioned, when we change in here, our video stage from anything to record, it triggers a webhook, just like you already saw right now. This is the exact same automation. It then triggers this webhook Based on the information this webhook sent, we are going out to ClickUp, grabbing by the task ID all of the information that's in ClickUp. What custom fields are there, what URLs, what anything and everything that's in there, we are just grabbing it to make sure make.com has all of the information. And then it creates a folder in Google Drive in my 2025 YouTube folder that is named by the episode number, the task name, which is the video title, and the task ID, just in case something ever breaks, I know exactly which task this is. Within this main folder, it then creates a final folder, a raw folder, a graphic folder. And not only that, it then also grabs that main folder URL from Google Drive and plugs it into ClickUp. So when you look right back here, you can already tell that all of these Google Drive folders are automatically linked and I literally can just click on it and there is the whole folder structure. This right here easily saves me 10 minutes of manual work for every single video. Multiply that by 52 videos per year and we are saving eight plus hour annually just on this one single automation. That's another eight hours per hour podcast episodes because those are going out weekly too. Not only that, the key difference here with running webhooks and ClickUp is if you used a regular make.com trigger like checking your Google spreadsheets, for new videos or go out and check ClickUp. That would be running every 15 minutes or maybe you schedule it for every half an hour, it doesn't matter. At every 15 minutes, that is 96 operations daily. You are paying for those. With the webhook, you use exactly one operation every time I record a video, one versus 96 daily. So for a tool like make.com where you pay for operations, this is a massive cost saving. Now let me give you a bonus tip that will save you even more time. Instead of building these web automations from scratch, you can save time by using make.com blueprints. And yes, all of our ClickUp templates in the shop that include external automations like this have the blueprint included. Now, what are blueprints? Blueprints are your snapshot, your template that you can just pull into your make.com automation. So how does that work? Under your more tab, you can export blueprints and you also can import blueprint. So the export blueprint downloads a JSON file that you then can 
say import blueprint, choose the file and it brings it up and it automatically asks you of, hey, you don't have access to this account because that's my information. Asks you to plug in your webhook, your Google Drive, connect to the tools you might have to connect to and you easily have this framework integrated and customized for your use. So this gives you a complete working automation in minutes instead of having to build everything from scratch. So if you want to skip the manual process, Process, just click the link in the description below. I have this podcast production process template ready for you to go. Even one simple webhook that saves you a few minutes daily adds up to hours of reclaimed time every single month. Start with one single automation that addresses your biggest pain point. Maybe it's folder creation and we got the template for you so you don't even have to rebuild it. Maybe it's updating your CRM when tasks move to a certain status or sending clients notification. The beauty of webhooks is that they are always working in the background. Once set up, allowing your systems to communicate without your constant involvement. And that's how you build a business that doesn't consume your life. And if this was helpful, click the like button and subscribe for more practical systems and ClickUp tutorials. Your engagement helps more business owners discover these efficiency strategies. And if you want to dive deeper, check out my ClickUp automation playlist right here. It will help you take your automation game to a whole new level. And remember, behind every efficient business is a well-designed system that gives you back time and freedom. I'll see you in the next video.